In this scenario, I'm going to show you a situation where my children are fighting and I do my best to stay out of their way. Go, you stupid again. Just go. Just go. What? Bad. No, it's only five night. minutes. It's my turn. No, it's not. Nora, who do you have a problem with? Ellie. And who do you need to talk to? Ellie. Good job. Give me my phone back! No. Give me my phone back! Stop! Give me my phone back! No. Yeah, give me okay. my phone back! Okay. This is what I need. I'm doing my best to read my magazine. And this is making me crazy. So, what I need is I need for you to make a choice. You can either stay in here and work it out, or go scream outside. It's your choice. Good choice. This is an example of an average fight with siblings. It's going to happen. We live in a shared environment. It's not their first and it certainly won't be their last. And to be honest, I'm actually happy about that. Siblings offer the opportunity to practice behaviors on each other and feel safe while they're still being loved regardless of their actions. Well, at least while they're young. My plan of action when I hear a fight begin is to stay quiet and ignore as much behavior as possible. The problem has nothing to do with me. I'm out of it. It's their issue and their opportunity to communicate their needs with each other. When they do their best to rope me in, I gently remind them that I'm not involved. And the simple question is, is my name Ellie? When I hand it off to them, I'm telling them I trust them. They're empowered to take care of their problem without the need for an authority to fix it, judge it, or mediate it. Imagine the disputes they'll avoid by practicing early communication skills without a person of authority holding them accountable. What a gift. And it actually feels really good to me to remove myself from the situation and relieve myself of the responsibility of holding them accountable. As the fight progresses, I start to feel my energy shift from breezy to really annoyed. I remember I have choice too. I can address it or I can ignore it. In the moment, I'm too annoyed to ignore it. So I pick two choices that'll work for me and I offer them the chance to settle it or continue on their own outside. When I stay out of it, they feel empowered and safe to express their feelings, make a decision, and they know in their hearts that I'm free from judgment. Ellie and Nora are happy because they have the freedom and room to grow emotionally and spiritually. I'm happy because I was calm, clear, and ultimately got what I wanted, a peaceful living room free from distractions. Just as a side note, it's a little easier to stay out of it when the kids are older, but when they're younger, I still stay out of the fight. I just simply offer my services as a translator in the moment. I do my best to avoid directing behavior, so I avoid sentences like, don't hit your sister, or it's not okay to hit people. Instead, I act like a translator for the child or children that can't talk. I use words like, when you pinch your sister and she cries, she's actually saying it hurts, she doesn't like it. Or, when your sister screams in your face, she's saying, leave me alone. I'm just translating what the energy in the situation is suggesting. That's it. I'm not looking for a happy ending and a sorry. Honestly, four sorries just irritate everyone involved. I'm actually looking for communication around feelings and how to express them. Sometimes, more often than not, they're not sorry, and that's okay. They're entitled to their own feelings. Often, I add a modeling moment to the scenario, something like, when my friends punch me, I don't play with them anymore. I find another friend to play with, but that's just me. I trust and know they will experience natural consequences that will dictate their future behavior. The challenge is upon me to not force my child to say sorry, especially in public, and not be embarrassed. I get it. But when we force our children to say sorry when they're not, we are teaching them to lie to others and deny their own truth. Embarrassment is a small price to pay in the moment. And really, I do have choice. I can be embarrassed or not.